Everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Points of Articulation. My name's David, and if you're new to the channel, welcome! Today I'm looking at the Star Wars X-Wing TIE Interceptor Expansion Pack. Now, the TIE Interceptor was first seen in Star Wars Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. For its size, it's a tad over one and a quarter inches long, and we do have a lot to cover. We're gonna look at the dials and tokens, the cards, put it on a stand, check out the mold and the beautiful paint, compare it to some other vessels, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. And now it's time for the dial token roll call. One maneuver dial. And to go with the TIE Interceptor's maneuver dial, these are all the maneuvers the ship can do. Three ship tokens, which are double-sided. One focus token. One evade token. One stress token. One critical hit token. And finally, 12 ship ID tokens with numbers 25 through 28. And that does it for all the dials and tokens. Now let's take a look at the cards. All right, starting off with the upgrade cards. Like always, I will read the name of the card. And if you would like to pause the video and read the paragraph below, by all means, go ahead and continue when you're done. First up, Daredevil. Then finally, Elusiveness. So that does it for the upgrade cards. Now let's take a look at the ship cards. Now looking at the ship cards, up first we have Sunter Fell, Turf Renner, Fell's Wrath, Saber Squadron Pilot, Avenger Squadron Pilot, and Alpha Squadron Pilot. Finally, we have another reference card for the boost action. So that does it for all the ship cards. Now let's take a quick look at that stand before we look at the beautiful ship. Now like always for the stand, you get a base and two rods that you connect to make a larger rod. Place it in like so, be gentle, grab your ship, place it on like so, and you're good to go. And now it's time to take a look at the mold. Like always, I will go over the main sections of the vessel, and then we'll get nice and close to see all the fine details. Starting off, we have our stand port on the bottom, orange laser cannons, our transparasteel viewport, looking pretty good, our cockpit hatch. In the back, we have our ion engines, our reactor, and what some say is a rear window. Pretty cool, our pylons, our winds, which look amazing. I think they're awesome. And on the tips, we do have laser cannons, which is awesome. So that covers most of the parts of the ship. So now let's get zoomed in and see all the beautiful details this baby has to offer. All right, let's start this closer look at the peg port right here. Pretty nice. All the models have them so far. For the ship itself, we'll start at the bottom. Look at all that crazy detail. I love this piece right here in the back. Pretty cool. Coming to the front, we have our protruding laser cannons and our transparasteel viewport with recessed windows. That looks great. And I love the supports going around. Sick. And just look at all the little raised sections going around the cockpit. That is nice. I think they came out great. Now, turning the ship. We have our cockpit hatch. Paint's a little messy, but the detailing is pretty good. And then we have the aft of the ship. Our ion engines, reactor in the center, and apparently that black piece right there with the glossy paint is a rear window. But regardless, some pretty nice detailing. Now we have our pylons. Nicely done. We'll give it a nice rotation. Beautifully detailed. I think those came out great. Amazing stuff. So now let's take a look at those wings. And now let's take a look at those wings. Now both wings are identical. We'll begin with the brace. And just look at all that beautiful detail and recesses and raised modules. Amazing. Even the back. Beautifully done. And I have to say I love the solar panels. Literally hundreds of raised sections. Just beautiful work. You can see all the little details leading up to the laser cannons on the tips. Beautiful. Now there is detailing on the borders as well. Just a great design. I love this thing quite a bit. Now in the center... We do have some detailing as well. That looks great. Amazing stuff. Now right here we have a better look at the cannons on the tips. 
nicely done. Go to the back right here where the pylon meets the wing. And you can see hundreds of little modules here. And that looks amazing. Right here seems to be a bunch of little pipes. Fantastic stuff. They really did a great job with this ship. So that's everything I had to say about the mold. In short, a beautiful looking ship. So now let's take a look at the paint. Alrighty then, now let's take a look at the paint. The TIE Interceptor has about six different colors. The first one up is that beautiful dark blue. We've been seeing it a couple times with different TIE Fighters and it looks amazing. Next we have black on the winds for the solar array paneling. Very clean, very awesome. In the interiors as well as the exteriors. Pretty sweet. Now we also have glossy black for the transparent steel viewport. Gray supports around that, looking good. Glossy black for the cockpit hatch windows. As well as the back right here, which one source says is a rear window. Which is kind of neat. And turning the ship around, we have orange for the laser cannons. And finally, you guessed it, the beautiful black wash. Filling in all those details and bringing them to life. You can really see all the details just popping. This looks amazing. I think they did a decent job with this one. Especially on the winds, you can see all the details. Beautiful. So that does it for the mold and the paint. So now, let's compare this to some other ships, and then we'll be done. And now for a quick size comparison with the TIE Interceptor, we have some other X-Wing miniatures. Moving left from the TIE Interceptor, we have the TIE Fighter, the T-65 X-Wing, and finally the next ship I'm reviewing, the Millennium Falcon, or the Corellian YT-1300 freighter. And that does it today for my review of the Star Wars X-Wing TIE Interceptor Expansion Pack. Now the TIE Interceptor was first seen in Star Wars Episode 6, The Return of the Jedi, and for its size it's a little over one and a quarter inches long. Now I love the TIE Interceptor, I think it's a great design, however is it worth picking up? First off, looking at this from a model collector's standpoint, hands down this is one of the best TIE Interceptors I've ever seen. I love what Fantasy Flight Games did here, especially in the wings. I think they excelled with that. Not only is it covered by literally hundreds of little raised bumps for the solar panels, but what I love is the wind braces, all the little details in the back of the wind that we looked at before, and the four laser cannons on the tips. To me, all that little added detail that they took the time to add, that stuff is amazing and adds so much realism to it. Now for the rest of the ship, it looks amazing as well. I love the recessed transparent steel viewport. Great stuff. Now moving on from the mold, let's talk about that paint. Six colors working together to really give us something special. And this ship would have been perfect if it wasn't for the offset of the glossy black on the cockpit hatch. Regardless, even with that little paint mishap, this is a beautiful ship and I do recommend it to model collectors. Now for the gameplay aspect, the expansion gives you everything you need to play the TIE Interceptor, including dials, tokens, and cards. Now many people seem to have an issue with the TIE Interceptor's mechanics, and Fantasy Flight Games has released other TIE Interceptors, mainly the 2-pack, which comes with two repaints, more ship cards, and upgrade cards, which tried, I guess, to fix some of their issues. So do I recommend it for gameplay? It's really 50-50, it's up to you. I would say, sure, learn how the ship flies, test it out with your friends. It's not the best, but it's not the worst either. Now, if you're looking to buy this ship, you can find it for about $14.99, depending on where you go. I recommend eBay or Amazon. I've seen some at Barnes & Noble. However, there are tons of hobby shops and game stores and internet sites that carry these things. So, search around, be patient, and pick one up for cheap. So that's everything I have to say about this awesome ship today. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.